Hello and welcome to another edition of the Time Flies Podcast. I am your host, Dariel. If you guys are watching this on YouTube, thank you very much for checking out this video. But you guys can see that we got the gang back. The gang is back intact. BX boys. BX boys are in the building. Virtual. Yes, sir. Virtual. Sure. Yo, how y'all doing, man? How y'all been? Yeah, we, we good, go, baby. We, we, good. Good. we chilling. We missed you. It's been a legit year but I, since we've done a pod. Because, like, yeah, it was last summer that we did the Cuddy joint. That's a fact. Yeah. So, really? Yeah. Yeah, bro. It's been last summer was the last time we uh we did a pot. All three of us did a pot together. And yeah. I'll never let you down. I'll never let it down. <laughs> I'll never let it down. <laughs> Yo, oh yeah. my god. It's the day I so die. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, we we just skip we can skip past that, bro. It's a lot. There's a lot of <laughs> so listeners and viewers, go check out those videos. Uh a lot of good content, some hot takes, primarily from me, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, no, nah, man, I just want to see, before we get into it, I just want to see how y'all, got, how y'all been, what y'all been up to, how's life, Ray, Jay, whatever y'all want to tell me, man, because I haven't, I haven't seen y'all in a little bit. I've been good, bro, living life, you know, up, ups and downs as usual, how life comes, but you got to go roll with the punches. You got to mm-hmm. you gotta figure it out your own, or with the help of your friends, with the, with the advice of your friends, aka Rayner, you and my, my, uh, my small little uh, circle of friends. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But overall, you know, just working. And just trying to be a, the best person I could be, honestly. Pushing you know, forward. So that's basically it. Pushing forward. Yeah. That's good, oh, man. man. That's good. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear you're doing good. Ray, how about you, my boy? My baby, you know, working hard. It's been a fucking hard summer at work and shit like that, but, you know. Nah, he's killing it. He's fun. killing it. He's killing it. <laughs> <laughs> we work hard, play hard. So, but, you know, I can't complain. Just missing my family time. That's all. But I got to make that work. That's all, man. So, that's it. But everything else is good. Can't complain. That's- that's good, man. I mean, always trying to find a balance is always hard, you know. So, so but, are you but, man, are you good with you? Yeah, everything's all right, man. Thanks, thanks for asking. Everything's good. Just trying to push forward. Um, been hanging out with my girl. Um, I was telling Jay, I was telling Rainer, uh, we were talking, uh, maybe like a uh, last week or something, and uh, I was telling her like, let me know when the next function is so I could bring her, so y'all can meet her. You know, I definitely want, I definitely want you guys to meet her. You gotta um, come up town. Yeah, <laughs> I'll come to the BX, bro. You know, I can, I know I'll show love. I'll come to the BX, or I'll meet you on the city, whatever y'all want to do. But uh, yeah. but yeah, man, I've been hanging out with her a lot, Sophia, and um, going to the beach and just trying to trying to enjoy life a little bit, man. That's been what's up with me. Um, of course, you know, I've been listening to music. We're gonna be talking about one of the leaders in the music industry right now, Travis Scott. He just dropped his very very highly anticipated album, Utopia. We're recording this. Utopia dropped. Roughly about last week, um, Travis Scott had a five-year hiatus. And if you guys have, wa- if you guys watch and listen to the Cuddy uh, podcast episodes, you guys know that we're fans of Travis Scott. So this episode was going to be covering the album, man, giving our thoughts, giving our takes, all that good shit. So before we get into the actual album, what I wanted to do for the listeners and viewers and gentlemen, of course, you guys can chime in whenever. I wanted to give a little bit of a breakdown of the timeline of Travis Scott's whereabouts. And also, like, the promotion he was doing for this album, because, as we all know, uh, Astroworld, the festival, which was November 5th of 2021, there was a really sad tragedy that happened. People lost their lives. RIP to those people. Right. Um, and I'm going to get right into it. So Astroworld, the festival, that happened November 5th of 2021. Um, December 9th of 2021, which is just literally a month after. I don't know if you guys saw. Did you guys see the Charlemagne interview that he had with uh, Travis Scott? Nah. I don't think I watched it. No. Nah. So it was like, yeah, I mean, I saw it, but it was very like, you know, cookie cutter. And it was Travis just saying like how bad he felt and how like that video he made. Right, right, right. So, I mean, it was it was, it was yeah. kind of weird because it was like a month right after the tragedy. And like people, I remember hearing stuff, uh, seeing stuff on the internet, people, people saying that like he shouldn't have spoken at all. But he okay. just wanted to give his condolences to the people, man, because that shit was crazy. I think it's weird because, I mean... We've all been following Travis Scott for some time, and he's not somebody who speaks a lot. Like he doesn't really yes. interviews. He's like quiet. Like I um, I had went to go see Chase B once at SOBs, and he was there. Obviously, he performed and shit like that. And he was walking by, and I went to give him a dap, and I was saying what's up. He gave me that, but he wasn't really like talkative. Like he just kind of kept moving. Right. But like it's kind of like you just know his personality just from like based off of what he gives. Like he gives his music. Even, like, in his videos sometimes, he's, like, a little awkward. Like, his interviews, he doesn't look up. So, like, you know what to expect from him. So, like, I think he just felt pressured because of how big that tragedy was and, like, people pressuring him. And that's, like, 
some of the downsides of the internet and shit like that. But you know, I think I think he did a good thing speaking up, but then obviously, as Jay mentioned, he did his own little video and they got memed and stuff like that. I felt bad. Yes. <laughs> yes. Internet, internet's cruel, but you know, he addressed it. Um, yeah. but yeah, I felt like he kind of they kind of like forced his hand a little bit with that one. All right, so so this is crazy. So December 9th, that was an interview with Sean Lemaine, and then the research that I did prior to recording this podcast, the next inkling of Travis Scott that we get was fucking in April of 2022. Where the utop the, the first Utopia billboards started popping up in LA, and also around the same time, Travis kind of made like his uh musical return, and it was it was on a feature from Southside and Future, and the song was called Hold That Heat. It was featuring Travis Scott and I believe one more person, but that was the first time we heard um Travis Scott like since the festival tragedy period, and then after April 2022, it's not until early 2020, early this year. Where Jordan Brand and Travis Scott, they put out like, I don't know if you guys remember this or anything, because I was surprised. It took me back when I found out about it, because I didn't remember it at all. Jordan Brand and Travis Scott, they put out like a cryptic commercial. And I'm not sure if it was something for Utopia, to be honest, because it wasn't really clear. Travis Scott was doing like a little voiceover, but it, it felt more like a Cactus Jack and Jordan collaboration. But... That's just another uh, example of how Travis was coming slowly coming back into the spotlight. February of this year, he held his annual charity softball game. And I, saw, I was looking at clips on YouTube and stuff. And, and one of the clips, one of the fans was yelling out that we need Utopia. Utopia. And Travis, like, Scott, Travis Scott looked at the fan that was yelling it. And he, like, he said out loud, like, it's coming soon. Um, so that was an update for the fans. May 2023, the official logo for Utopia, co Utopia comes out. I don't know if you guys saw it, but the it was like a the font the the way that they created it it was like the word Utopia, but the font was in a way where if you flip it upside down, it still says Utopia. So it's like either way you look at it, regular Utopia, then if you flip it upside down, it's Utopia. It was kind of like the first like main kind of uh, promotion for the album, if you will, besides the billboards. And then May of this year, which is only a couple months ago, that's when the photos started coming out. Travis Scott security guards. Walking around with a Utopia briefcase, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's Raiders. That's Raiders. Oh, he got oh, yo, the Krabby Patty secret recipe in there. <laughs> yo, Ray, well, tell everybody what you were thinking of copying because we were talking about it Man. before starting. <laughs> I was just looking on the site because Travis just put out a bunch of merch and he's dropping the first edition digital in like two hours. So he was going through the merch and they got the fucking briefcase. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. The briefcase, the briefcase had me hyped. When that, when that part of the promotion, like he was just carrying the briefcase, he was leaving the places. I'm like, yo, that's kind of hard. Yo, I don't remember that at all, bro. Damn, I don't remember bro, that at all. It's on the site for 150. Listen, you gonna cop? Ooh. I'm thinking about it. I'm gonna think about it. That's hard, bro. You gonna cop? Like, that's because that's like people, artists drop merch and they, like the weirdos tend to put out this one item that is just like, yo, nobody else would do that. And those are the ones that are kind of like special. That's really right. what I'm thinking. About it, I'm like, yo, that's kind of cool. Like, that's kind of like Supreme. Whenever they drop their fucking like, you know, collections, they always have like one item like, that's like a yeah. fucking, it's like a teapot. It's like a fucking a lighter or some shit. A pinball machine, like you well pinball said, machine. exactly. It's yeah, always like yeah. that. That one item, like to me, like it stands out. Right. No, yeah, hundred percent. I'm also in the same month. The weekend drops his first photo. Uh, the security guard, same thing, holding the Utopia briefcase and a handcuff to his wrist. Um, but also Lil, Lil Uzi Vert posts a photo on Instagram and he's wearing a Utopia beanie. So the weekend picture, Lil Uzi Vert, now the internet's going crazy. They're speculating that weekend and Lil Uzi, Lil Uzi Vert are part of the album. Makes sense. A couple months ago, since we're in August, Ray and Jay, your boy, Bad Bunny, he posts a photo, same thing. His sure. security, his security go. guard, his briefcase, same shit um and then the end of the end of june a bunch of new utopia billboards show up uh beginning of last month um the last round of the utopia billboard start popping up Ju um july 6th mike dean he actually posts a tweet saying it's july 21st but then he re then uh he deleted it right after so everybody thought that was the day that um that travis was gonna drop the album well, but mike dean was doing an interview and he was talking about how utopia reminds him of the days of al faro to be specific but also a rodeo. And if you're a Travis Scott fucking fan like Jay and I, you guys know that Al Farrell was his very first project that he dropped, his mixtape. Right. That shit was f 
fire, fire. bro. Fire. I remember, I remember in the summer just like coming across this mixtape on that piv. Shout out that piv. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? And it's just, it was so different from everything that was going on at the time. And from there, you kind of tell that Travis was on a trajectory that was like all by himself. Um, July 26th, I don't know if you guys saw this, but it's like some random ass totems popped up on Utopia, Texas. It was like some like weird ass statues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that. I saw that. I saw that. I'm like Aztec looking statues and shit, but Travis is different. So we don't know that shit. Um, He then announced the listening party in Egypt, which we then now know that it got canceled. Um, do you guys know why it got canceled? I don't think I've ever heard why it got canceled, though. I think it's, it was more of, like, the logistics of, like, I guess, like, what they, what his vision was of, like, the party or the viewing, whatever the case may be. I, I didn't think that they had the, they didn't plan for the infrastructure to, like, you know, to be there. To hold you know, everybody? It's, it's a hold everybody, you know, especially because this place is old. You know, yeah. <laughs> like the, the music could be so loud that, that the pyramids just like turn to dust type yeah. shit. You know, That's, I don't I'm think dead. they gave uh, an exact <laughs> answer, but I think what Jay is saying is probably mostly true. Like this is like ancient shit. You feel me? Like <laughs> it's it's something that they probably didn't really want to mess with too much. Great idea, but it's probably something that they were like, yeah, this is not probably the most feasible thing for us to do right now, especially over here. Yeah, that's I mean, saying, but we never got an exact answer from what I know. No, I mean, that, that, that totally makes sense. Jay, what's up? At first, it, it, it was canceled. Then it's, then they said it was like a, a go. And then it got canceled again. So it got canceled <laughs> twice. Oh, so something's going on. And yeah, know, I don't know. The aliens, bro. It's the aliens. I was <laughs> just going to say, yo, we talked to the aliens. And the aliens were like, nah, we can't, bro, yeah. nah, we can't have Utopia at the pyramids. That's our crib. You can't fuck with that. <laughs> we can't build that shit again, bro. It's over. <laughs> this is bad. Yeah, that's a fact. So after after the um listening party in Egypt got canceled, um he actually announced that he's gonna do one in Rome, Italy, and nothing has been said. It has been canceled, so everything looks like it's still a go. Um, the last piece of information that I got uh, was that did you guys see the clip of Travis Scott and Michael Jordan talking? It dropped on like a whole bunch of social media. It was do you, do you remember the the clip of him and Rick Rubin working on the album? Yeah. So I and Ray, I, I I remember when I I think I I shared that in the group chat and you were like, yo, I don't want to I don't want to see this shit. Just drop the fucking album, bro. <laughs> what was going on, bro? What was up with yo, the hate? Yo, I'd be tired of these motherfuckers doing that, bro. You're just playing somebody talking about your album, bro. Rick Rubin, I though, bro. Heard the album. I want to hear the album too, bro. What are you doing? I don't want to hear about the album from somebody who heard the album. <laughs> All the other promotion was cool. Like the briefcase, I'm in. Like people wearing the merch, the billboard, I'm in. But to hear from somebody who heard the album, now I'm just pure hating. I'm like, bro, you heard the album. I don't want to hear from you, bro. But see, I, but hear see, the album. I feel you. But see, the, the, there's a little, for me personally, I thought just the Rick Rubin and Travis Scott, that I like because Rick Rubin, obviously, he's looked at as like the godfather of hip hop or whatever. He Rubin has. Yeah, exactly. It's Rick Rubin. He has so much respect. So I was kind of like, and I don't think we ever really seen Travis and Rick Rubin, Rick Rubin before ever just be in the same room. I mean, we probably heard of it through the internet, but we never actually saw it for our eyes. So me seeing that, I was kind of hyped. I was like, oh, Rick Rubin is part of the production on this shit. Like, okay, this is going to get crazy. Yeah, I remember sending that to the group chat and Ray was like, yo, I'm not here for this. Like, I just want to hear the album. <laughs> I was like, damn, I was not expecting that. I, th I thought you were going to reply and be like, yo, this shit is about to be legendary. <laughs> I say, exactly. yeah, I'm talk about that, man. Exact opposite. <laughs> um, the actual album itself, um, Utopia, he has a shitload. Well, when the album initially dropped, it was just the the title of the tracks. We didn't he didn't have any features on it, and you're literally listening to the album and you're finding out the features as you're listening to the album. So, did you guys did you guys listen to the album 12 p.m. when it dropped, or like when did you guys listen to it? Listen to it, Jay. Uh, I listened to it um, the night it dropped. I was here in the crib, and I'm like, oh, wait. It dropped already. So I played it on my home pod, but honestly, I was clapped already. So, like, I wasn't, like, in the <laughs> mindset to, like, really pay clapped. attention. <laughs> and um, But I listened to the first, like, three songs, but I was like, nah, let me wait till the morning when I do laundry. Then I could just really zoom in. And focus. Fire. And, and Good choice, I waited to the morning. I woke up, and then yo, honestly, it was okay. Uh -huh. It was okay. Uh -huh. I, I we'll get more to it in a little in a little bit, but it was it was an okay album. Okay, so okay, so real quick, Jay. Before, uh, before I ask Rainer, but Jay, like you listened to the album the next morning. You listened to the album. Did you like? Did you 
but just have it on repeat or you just or you just listen to it once and then it kind of moved on to the next kind of honestly what i did was um i had to stop at i know i had to replay that shit a couple of times that <laughs> shit that shit went hard bro that shit went so hard i was like wait i couldn't i couldn't pass um i know but then topia twins i don't know what i was waiting for because that shit is Bye, nah, that Topia shit. Twins is nah, Topia Twins is goes nuts. Ray, what about you, bro? When when did you hear it? Thursday night at 10, 12 p.m. or when did you hear it? So I was awake. I was awake. I didn't listen to the full album at twelve. Uh, I finished the rest of it the next day because I wanted to play it on the home pods and shit like that or on my speaker. But it's late. The neighbors be banging on the ceiling and shit like that. But I'll tell you this. When I pressed and I heard the situation. I'm like, oh, we didn't put some shit. Hold on, <laughs> yo. Oh, hold on, yo. And when that B dropped, I said, "What up, man?" I ran bro, that bro. back ten seconds in, bro. Opening the fucking oh, album with that it. song, dog. Oh, insane. God. When the drums <laughs> drop. Wait, question. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> wait, 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 is that his best intro to an album, in your opinion? Yo, y'all love dropping these fucking like questions that you really <laughs> have to think, and it's like in the moment, it's like, dog. Gotcha. I need, I need, I need to up there about this, bro. It. It's oh. up there, yo. Because that... he was, because he was rapping like. Nah, I he was. He talk was. about. Was. I always talk about his verse on "Don't Play," because to me that's like one of my favorite okay. Travis Scott's verses. Because the way he was rapping, I never heard him rap like that again, bro. <laughs> mm. So like, on this album, he did that he got several into it. times, which is why I'm like, oh, he's rapping like a little more beyond what he usually does. Because right, y'all know right. me. I'll be like, yo, his features has been fucking trash. I don't know. I'm scared about this album. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, right. I didn't when know that single album, came out. It felt like the features that he's been doing lately have been gaka. Yeah, bro. His features have just been like lazy, like mm. not giving mm. a lot, which is fine because he's a vibe more. Like, but it wasn't, it wasn't hitting for me, you know? But okay. yeah, man, I hit that intro, bro. I played that shit like five times and I got to number two. Thank God that shit was a slap. That shit is yeah, second hard. Half, second, second half of Thank God goes crazy. The first half, I like it, but the second half is... When they, bro, the whole okay, shit okay. is hard for me, bro. But that, yeah, bro, that shit. I think I stopped on uh, Modern Jam. Modern Jam. I, I fuck okay. with Modern Jam, but I listened to the rest of the album the next day. So, but yeah, like I was I was like, oh, I'm in, we in, we in for a trip on this one. So okay, Modern so, Jam gives me a Yeezus. Oh, 100%. 100%. We're going to get into that too. Because apparently... Was, my bad, go ahead. That my bad, song... Yeah was i think i am a god there was like a demo that had i am a god over that beat so this song is old apparently like okay, that so it's recycled <laughs> okay okay yeah, yeah, yeah. 2013 old yeah apparently there's a handful of songs on here that he got he took from from yeah because yeah yeah because you know travis jesus is travis scott exactly anybody <laughs> exactly that, that, that's everybody's like oh this sounds like Yeezus. I'm like, my nigga. <laughs> Yeezus is because of Travis, out, exactly. And if you listen to Owl Farrell, like you were saying, that was his wave, bro. That was his wave. That 100%. that album is so, like, every song is different. And it's like, he was trying to figure out what he was going to stick to. Or maybe that was all the sounds that he fucking had in his head. But, like, for that to be, like, the follow-up, because Owl Farrell was out first, I think. Then Yeezus came out. So yeah, I yeah. think I heard Yeezus first. And then I went to Alpha. I'm just like, bro, like, this is him. <laughs> and yeah, man, like you said earlier, a lot of people were comparing it to Yeezus. And if you look at Yeezus during that time, yay, he does this thing where, like, on, on certain projects, he tries to adapt the style of certain people. 808s and Heartbreak, Cuddy, Yeezus, Travis, uh, My Name is Pablo. I don't know if you could boil it down to one person. He, he kind of took a lot of different things from different people. But I think he, he was trying to get on the, the Atlanta wave, I would say, a little bit. Okay. Then, yeah future you had young thug you had all these motherfuckers running shit so I, he was like on that type of wave you know yeah 100 percent. but yeah i mean uh, th yeah so since this album dropped everyone's saying that sounds like jesus but yeah now we know jesus is travis scott um travis yeah. scott's influence but um jay going back to your original question bro as far as like is that the best intro i mean just looking at the albums we got stargazing off of astro world Yeesh. god uh I, you're right. I don't give a fuck what you say because I know you don't. I don't. I know you don't like. I know you don't like Carousel, the second track on Asteroid. I don't give a fuck, bro. That shit's mid. Stargazing, <laughs> stargazing to Carousel to Sickle Moon, bro. That's why Carousel. 
That's why carousel gets me tight. Cause that's why is that in, why is that in my sandwich? Why is that in my sandwich, bro? <laughs> why nah. is this piece of shit in my sandwich, bro? Nah, piece of shit. Come on, bro. You bro, got I don't know on the vocals, dog. Bro, I don't know what that beat is. I don't know what I don't know what's going on on that song, bro. No, nah, I mean I feel you. We can agree to disagree, but yeah, uh, I don't remember how that song even goes. It's not that it's a terrible. I just really don't like it. Damn. All right. Yeah. Now, I, I I always felt like those, those the the three track opening sequence on Astro. I thought it was perfect. But okay. th- then we got the ends on Birds in the Trap saying McKnight. Boy. Jay, that might be the one? No, it's not. That's the one not. for me. That's the one for me. <laughs> Stargazer is my number one, bro. Nothing beats Stargazer, bro. Stargazer is number one. I'm not mad you at you. You know why, boy? Hold, you on, know? hold on. Hold on. But I think about Days Before Rodeo, too. The, was, it, was it the prayer? Was the prayer the first intro? Yeah, yeah. intro? It was yeah. a prayer. That be go so that, hard, bro. I mean, but for, for now, let's let's stick to like his his album albums. Albums, okay, okay. So right. for, out of those four, we got Hyena, Stargazing, Pornography, The Ends. Rodeo. Yeah, Pornography is fire too. To me, wake up, nigga. Oh, gotta oh. get the cake up, nigga. Minute. Oh, I gotta wake up, nigga. But that's the ends for me, bro. Because once yeah. I heard. Eh, and Andre came on, it was over, bro. Yo, that's a <laughs> fact, bro. I'm not it gonna lie. Over. He's he's not lying. This is the ends for me, bro. Uh, to, to me, me I went outside. Oh, yeah, Ooh. man. I don't, to me, to me is bef- is between Stargazing and the ends, but Ray, you make a fucking really valid point, bro. Just the whole oh, Andre. But Stargazing, bro, like the first half and then the B switch and the B switch is sick. Like come you know on, what it is bro. with Stargazing? And this is like unpopular opinion. I really oh, no. I kind of don't like the second half. I like the first half so much that I wish that that continued. Cut it. Not that cut, it's it. Bad. cut it. <laughs> uh, we'll be right back. We'll be right back. <laughs> no, <I'm not. laughs> that's, that's what he's like. And it ain't no much pit if ain't no injuries. I got them stage diving up the nosebleed. Nosebleed. Book of sugar till the nose. That's your right? nosebleed, bro. That shit is he went, fire. He, he, went, he, went, he went crazy. That shit is fire. I just I just like the first half so much that I wish that the song had more of that. Not the second half is fire. It's fire. But I just love that first half. Yeah. All right. So let's he retracted his statement then. <laughs> John, I'm, I'm sorry to do this to y'all, but let's, uh, let's, let's make choices, bro. We got to stand on our square. We got to stand on our square. We got to make choices. Right there. Damn. Jay. <laughs> I, I thought it was going to be a little harder for Jay. But... <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Yeah, the ends. I got the ends. The yeah. ends? I love that. I love the ends too, but I have stargazing. Oh, <laughs> fuck, this is hard. Wait, Ray, hold on. Ray, you fucked me up with fucking uh, pornography, bro. When you bro, started, like, that shit, bro, pornography go hard too. Bro, people don't talk about rodeo <sighs> enough, bro. People don't talk about rodeo, bro. Tell you, top two, that's top two. I mean, we, yeah, like, uh, I mean, we're gonna get into the whole. We're gonna talk about a lot of his albums later on, but yeah, man, rodeo his first de- major debut album. Um, it it kind of it kind of got put in the in the back burner because his last few projects have been so fucking classic. Um, he was he was still coming up, figuring it so, out. Yeah. Like if you right. fucked with if you fucked with him already, you were fucking with Rodeo. But then by the time his second album came, he already kind of was seeping through the mainstream. And then Astro World, he was off to the races. Like a hundred percent, a hundred. Well, that's why I feel like Rodeo is like super core because we were there for the build up. Be like, yo, days before Rodeo, Rodeo coming soon. When's Rodeo? Yo, this mm. thing pushed it back. Rodeo, 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 rodeo. What oh, was in Coney Island performing? What was it performing? Days before rodeo, right? That was um, it was after because I went and he was doing he was doing oh, pick this up guy. The phone. This guy's international. He yeah. did pick up the phone for that one, so he was already oh, on the way to the second oh, album. The, Wait, oh, what birds. was that? That was like a festival, or that was just like a one one off show. What was that? It's just a one off show. Yeah, where in Coney they Island? Had, they had redone the I think it's called the amphitheater. And he was one of the first people to perform there. Damn. All right, but let's get back to, to Utopia. When you listen to the album, you're finding out as you listen to the album who's featured on, on different songs. Oh, and me personally, I actually, I never answered the question. I didn't listen to the album when it dropped. I actually didn't right. listen to it for like, yeah, facts. I didn't listen to it until like a couple days after, dog. Because like, because like, I, I just, I think it was because I just didn't want to be disappointed. I was like worried because like, I wasn't really keeping up with Travis as much as I should have 
Like the features, Ray said that his features were sounding lazy. Like I didn't really have a take on his features. The only thing I had going off of was the stuff that I saw on social media, the Rick Rubin joint, the video with him and Michael Jordan, all that kind of stuff. That's the only thing I was going off of. And I kind of wanted to go into it with just like, just kind of like Ray Ray's a philosophy on trailers. Like now watching the trailers, just going into the movie. And I mean, I, I, I it's safe to say for me that he did not fucking disappoint. But I'm finding out I'm finding out about the features on his album as I'm listening to it. So we got how do you pronounce this? Hit? Casey, I think it's Casey. I Casey. Think it's Casey. So Casey, uh, Tizo touchdown. Who I, I was wondering, like, where's he from? Is he from? He sounds like he's from Memphis, but I could be wrong. I'm not sure, but that uh-huh. that nigga went crazy on that. Modern. Shit. That's a fact. <laughs> Tizo, that's a fact. At got, the end, the modern jam. Whoever, whoever yeah. that was, which one of them two it was. That shit was fire, bro. <laughs> so yeah, shit was... we got uh Bonnie uh Bon Iver, Sanfa. Uh hey, Sanfa's with... on there? Yeah. Sanfa's on, on my eyes. On... Yes, the ending of my eyes. Wait, so on oh, my middle, eyes, the middle part. Is it, is it just Sanfa? He got because he got isn't like Bonnie Iver on that one too? Bonnie Iver is on that, yeah. It's Bonnie Iver and Sanfa. But Sanfa comes on like towards the middle of the song. He starts like I got Bonnie Bear and Sample on the same song. That's hard, bro. I mean, and that song is fucking crazy, bro. <laughs> that song is dope. Uh, I got... like my eyes too. It reminds me of Elsa's Baby Boy from the Cuddy album. You went Ooh. crazy, like the ending of it. That second half was okay. kind of reminds me of it. Od, Od, continue, continue, though. Good call, my boy. I'm leaving out one person, but we'll get to him later. Um... <laughs> 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 Yo, that shit was fire, son. That shit was hard, dog. I'm uh, sorry. Nah, nah, nah. Like, I, I'm, I'm yo, yo, yo. Nah, he whack. Other than the boy, we got Playboy, Shaq West, Beyonce, Twenty One. Who? I didn't even know Shaq West was on this. That's crazy. Yeah, he's on um, Fiend. Fiend. With Playboy, I know. With Playboy, yeah, with Playboy. Playboy. I found I found this I found all this out because I went um into the credits obviously in the album. That's when it shows like written by, produced by, and all that shit. Right. Um. Oh, Rob Forty Nine. I wanted to ask you guys. Do you guys know? I'm not. I'm not familiar. I don't know about him, but I'm not familiar with him either. That nigga went crazy. Crazy. It. <laughs> everybody, everybody, everybody showed up, dog. Hey. Showed up, and then we got the fucking the pairing of the weekend and Travis, which I don't think has really failed. Way yeah, Max. it's Way Lee. That's fucking uh Maximus, right? Yeah, uh, Circus, Circus Maximus. Maximus. Yeah. Circus Maximus. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Young Thug on Skip though, which is fucking Yo. insane. Yeah. It's, good, it's good to hear Thugger's voice too, man. It's really nice. good to hear his voice, man. It's like, uh, obviously, we all know the situation he's in. Hopefully, he gets out or something. It's but nice. we it's need. Not like, it's looking grim, I tell you that. Big facts, facts. unfortunately. But yeah, but my we boy need Jeffrey. Oh, it's it's my boy Jeffrey. My name is Jeffrey. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my name is Jeff. <laughs> my name is Jeff. <laughs> James Blake. Um, West Side Gun. West Side Gun pops up on fucking. Lost forever. Lost forever. Lost forever. Thank you very much, which I thought was fucking fire. Alchemist. Uh, shout out Alchemist. He was on that track, produced it. Um, Love with Cuddy. Fucking Scott. The GOAT. <laughs> Scott. We got Bad Bunny. <laughs> uh, we got uh, we got um, Future and SZA on one Yo, track. Yo, that song go too. The hat in the shop is trash, but the song is fire. My, my girl SZA, 10 out of 10. Yo, SZA makes the track. I'm sorry. Yo, SZA makes the track. I agree. I agree. I, I don't I, know if that's bro, a hot take. I, go, oh, I can't wait. Like when I listen to the song, I can't wait for her to get to her part because I'd be in my bag. Future did his thing too, though. But yeah, she definitely he came. Through. That was her vibe for sure. No, her no, no, and no. Travis just always make a good like song, bro. Yeah. Like L- Love Galore, Open Arms from SZA's album. That shit is my favorite song on the album. That shit is fire. Wait, you know, L- Love song. Galore is on Control and. Open arms is that uh, on control too? I think no, it's on it's the a, um, S- SOS. SOS? Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Gotta make Yo, up. I just peeped right now as you name your features. I'm looking through this the list too as you continue to finish. Fucking uh Dave Chappelle on Paris. I fucking knew you were gonna say that shit. <laughs> yeah. The fuck? Wow, wait, what? Yeah, Paris, like somebody's talking and that's Dave Chappelle. The goat. Okay, He's so Red right Bunny on K pop with yeah. the weekend again. Bad Bunny, and, Bad Bunny Weekend, hip hop, yeah, that song was kind of mid. And as far as him coming out with that as a single, like uh, people hyped it up. 
and, you know and, what? and it's like it's like me and what me and Raina talked about when it first like when it first dropped like yo you have three of the greatest artists out at the time right now right bad bunny the weekend travis scott right that's that's what you could that's what you created in the studio come on it, you do it's better, not bro. bad but it could have yeah, it could have been so much more but you need you to know, change the whole know, song you know i like the song when i listen to it with the album like it fits okay it fits with the it album changed it. yeah like i'm like yo this song like it fits like when it goes into it i'm like oh this is cool because it goes from love into that and you know love is very like up tempo yeah. So yeah, yeah yeah it's perfectly but that just brought up a question in my head now that we heard the album what would y'all have put as the first single right now it's only k-pop right it's twins bro it's k-pop and he kind of put out um del resto too as a solo what beyonce what beyonce right? oh get the fuck out of here bro oh, that... niggas don't like that so i like that song a lot skip <laughs> low key bro, wait 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 tell me, tell me. it's funny i got off the bus today because i was this is an album like, you know, just for the podcast. And I started playing this, and I'm the first to admit, I don't really fuck with Beyonce like that. <laughs> Keep it a buck with y'all. And I'm with you, dude. I, kind of, I, I kind of fucked with it. I kind of fucked with it. I kind of fucked with it. Kind of. I said kind of. I said kind of. But, <laughs> but no, yeah, no, no. It's, it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. No, I'll, st- I'll stand on the square. I'm not, like, the whole beehive shit, like, I really don't care. And I'm, yeah, honestly, I, I, if, I, if, I, if they come for me on this podcast, you. I'm actually glad, because it'll bring more eyes <laughs> to the podcast. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> He but yeah, get canceled. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll be all right. I'll be all right. But no, the, uh, Ray, to answer your question, like that song didn't really do anything to me besides the whole Beyonce thing. Like Beyonce and Travis, you're expecting like, a, obviously you're expecting a fucking song, a moment. And Beyonce doing whole, her whole melody stuff. I was like, I just, it's not that it's a bad song. It just didn't click with me. It, it didn't click with me. I kind of, I kind of fuck with when like, like two mega stars or whatever get together and the song is calm. Like, I feel mm. like sometimes, like, it's okay for that. And that's why, I, like, this song hits for me because it, it's one of those songs where it's just, like, I don't see it being this grand song that's going to be all over the place, which makes me enjoy it more because I'm like, Beyonce can fucking sing her ass off. Of course. And I think they did a, they did a good song together. It's calm. Like, I like it. But first single, y'all still got to answer that. You know what? And they're both from Houston. They're both from Houston. Facts. Facts. You know what? I'm looking at I'm looking at Circus Maximus, bro. Hmm. No way. There's no way. I'm looking at Circus Mask- Maximus <laughs> with the weekend. He did the little film too, Circus Maximus. That was the name of it. He did. He did. Yeah. Yeah. Harmony Korin, the the fucking guy who wrote Kids, he directed it. Oh, sick. That's pretty fire. Um. Yeah. No, nah, man. But uh, Circus Maximus, that's the better of the weekend song between K-pop and Circus Maximus. Oh, for I, sure. I agree. The weekend yeah, showed out better yeah, on Circus Maximus. But like, yeah, that's me. I think. I think just right now, looking at the list right now, I think that's that would be my choice. <laughs> I like uh, schizo. The thug. Not mad at that. Maybe he's gonna say something else. Honestly, maybe he's gonna maybe say meltdown. <laughs> I think that's. I think that's the obvious choice. That's why. That's why I don't want to say meltdown. <laughs> wait, wait. Yeah. What was the other one? Schizo and what else, Ray? Fiend. Maybe, maybe fiend. Fiend with Playboy. Fiend. Yeah. That shit go that hard. Shit like that, yeah, that shit is like a. A body. You gotta. You gotta turn up. Turn up. If what it's about? a solo joint with no feature, maybe um. Thank God. What about I know? I know. I know. I know it's fire, but I think it's nice as a a joint on the album that you just like ease into. Is it because so, like, oh, it was? Oh, is, 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 it's so much better for me because it was a surprise in terms of like y'all played it and I was like, wait, hold on, hold on. Hold on yeah, that's just hard. Run this back before we get into our favorite tracks and songs, songs that we're not really fucking with. I always got to show love to our boy Jay, our boy Yay. Um, that's a he- fact. <laughs> Talk to me nice. <laughs> Yo, he actually has a he has writing and producing credits for Thank God, the song that he had that the song that Casey is featured on. Um we yeah, see that here. God's Country, he has writing credits for. Um Telekinesis, he has writing credits for the joint future and scissor, which my what, what about that, the, bars, bro. What about what about that um mm, that as a first single, future and scissor? Telekinesis as a single, first single, no, 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 no. Nah, right? But, but it's still, it's much in that realm of echoes with Beyonce. Like, it's calm, mellow. So, like, that's why, like, he, people were waiting, bro. They were waiting. So it's just, it's just it, SZA? Come through. Is it SZA? Anything she touches? This is last album was touches, fire. Bro. No, 100%. And, 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 like, anything she touches is turning gold. And I'm saying her her part in that song is fucking insane, bro. That's why I was like. It is. Very good. Travis, you know, I, I don't think Travis plays the whole streaming numbers game. But, like, if you are, 
then telekinesis with scissor then that, that kind of would be like the obvious choice maybe one one random writing credit is not yay but fucking pharrell pharrell has writing credits on love the joint with Cuddy. Hmm. yeah I, I found that interesting kind of um, makes sense that kind of like that does has a the, the b has a pharrell vibe to it imagine a joint project with travis Cuddy and pharrell bruce <laughs> Jeez. No, I like writing credits are so weird because it's like, yeah, you can you can change like or add in one line and if like you this fucking person they'll put your name in there because it's yeah sometimes it's just like somebody did like one little line and they'll get credits so it's it's always cool to hear like who had input because I'd always think about like they were either in the studio right or they made the song for them and they're like. Yo, what do you think about this? Oh, I think you should do this, this, this. Like, all that stuff is kind of cool. I got into, like, nerd mode. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I don't know how that happened type shit. Well, there's that, there's a, there's that story that, yay, he gives writing credits to people that, like, literally are in the studio but don't say anything. Like, Sahai was doing an interview and he was saying that he was in the studio with yay during my beautiful dark twisted, twisted fantasy time. And some guy was wearing leather pants. And Sahai was like, Sahai said that Kanye looked at the leather pants and then he gave that guy writing credits on the song. <laughs> that's like that's yay but, yeah. yeah that's something that yay yeah. would do all right gentlemen let's get into the shits favorite tracks ray hit jay and us with it i know you want to talk about it we haven't talked about it yet that flow is hard bro okay what nobody <laughs> says, bro. No, no 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 hard, bro. you know what's that's interesting that's yeah. <laughs> you know what's interesting is the fact that like when i heard it yeah like what he was saying was crazy but what i when i heard it I I was taken aback about his flow. Like Drake has been around since fucking the beginning of time, bro. Like at this point, it's like, what the fuck, bro? Like, when are you gonna stop? And now he he's coming so out so much music too, bro. Like <laughs> so you... coming out with a new flow and it's fucking dope. And it's like like Jay and I where where Ye stands, but like in order for right. one to get us to say that yo, he did his shit on that fucking song, like it takes a lot of me. He came yeah. through, bro. He came through right. on that shit. It's like can't correct, bro. The shit, you know, this nigga. He's surgical, bro. He's <laughs> he announced that he's on the album on his story with the title Meltdown. Wait, when was that? Was that like the day before? The, the, the night the album came out. Oh, okay. So okay. Was like, you know, they all support and promote. He's like Meltdown at Travis Scott. And a couple days prior, did y'all hear about uh, Tupac's ring selling for like over a million dollars? Yeah. Fuckers wearing that ring, all his story, and now he's on the album. The song's called Meltdown. You hear the out uh, the fucking song, and he's talking about he's melting for Rel's chains. This nigga is cold, bro. This Stop is, is, him, bro. My man is calculated as a motherfucker, bro. So the boy is yo, he's methodical, bro. He's methodical, he's calculated, and as far as nah, like I mean, yeah, I got you. Nah, nah, I gotta give respect to my man. Yo, my man, on, bro. Bro. I got he's crazy, though. <laughs> yeah, see his wallpapers, his wallpaper is crazy. <laughs> for all my dogs <laughs> for all my coming dogs soon. go coming nah soon. but yeah obviously like meltdown meltdown is up there it's kind of like a, a baby sicko mode type shit i don't think it would be nowhere near as big as that no i don't think so um my favorite songs man like it's hard because i got a lot like obviously we talked about hyena thank god modern jam my eyes um you got meltdown i like fiend a lot i know Topia Twins is probably the song I played the most along with Hyena. Really? Yeah. Yo, Topia Twins go hard, bro. Topia um, Twins is dope, but I, I don't, I'm not playing it as much as y'all. It's just I catchy. Are, like, bro. it's just catchy. Like, the hook is catchy as fuck. Um, Schizo. I'm really, really digging Lost Forever, man. Lost Forever is really good. That's Westside, no? Yeah, man. Yeah. And a lot of people, like, they're shitting on Westside like they always do. I get it. Like, he he does the same shit. Like, but, but this is a hey, great yo. song. Yeah. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. <laughs> but yeah man like I, I like i like a lot of these songs um as far as like what i don't like there's probably like one or two songs that i might skip one of them is and it's not a bad song it's still growing on me uh it's god's country mm. which he put out as a single too because he put out a, a music video and then we talked about k-pop but when i listen to the album straight through i've noticed that i like playing like i like i let k-pop play but yeah, everything else like it's doable, but those are like my favorite songs on there. Like a yeah. handful, I can lie. <laughs> Clearly. Yeah, yeah, no, I do too. And Ray, I mean that you make a good point. Like the song there's only one song that I absolutely like I skip over, honestly. And that's the Beyonce joint, Del Resto, uh parentheses echoes. That's a song I skip over because I don't know, it just doesn't do anything for me. But 
like you said, when you play the song within the album, as you're listening to the album, you understand why it makes sense. You understand why he put it into the album. You understand why he had Beyonce. Like it, it good. It, it's a good. It's a good seamless um sequence. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, man. Honestly, the rest was the only song that I skip over. But as far as like some of my favorite tracks, dog, I'm still playing Hyena, bro. I'm still playing oh. Hyena, and it's the first. <laughs> that shit is hard, track, dog. When the oh my, when the drums. Dr- Oh my god, bro! bro. His, his flow is fucking nuts. His okay, flow is insane. bro, he was going crazy, bro. Yeah, he's this... gonna tell me next week that's his favorite opening on all the albums. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I heard it now. Heard it now. Heard it now. You, you already hear it. You already hear it. Uh, <laughs> I already hear it. I already hear it. I don't know if I could go that far, but now nah, that that goes on. Um, that goes into I kind of want to say about Travis is that like Travis, what he does that he puts, yeah, he has albums and music is his main profession, but like he's hip hop nowadays i've been hearing a lot i've been seeing a lot of stuff on the internet that people are complaining how everything is like microwave and like people are putting out songs projects and they're not really taking their time and then you got travis here taking five years part of it was because of the astro joint but part of it was because he, look at look at the album astro World. look at how much time he took putting things together for that album and look at how cohesive that album was and that album propelled him into superstardom and he's doing the same thing here. He just took his time and he creates these worlds, bro. He creates these worlds and narratives and characters. And freestyling right now, the only other person that I that I that um that I'm thinking of that does that is the weekend. And when you look at the weekend and Travis Scott, they're fucking A plus 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 superstars. Yeah. So th- some of the rappers and some of the musicians, they should take they should take notice and just see how Travis and Weekend they craft their projects, bro. Like it's really impressive. I mean, yo, honestly, man, Meltdown, bro. I also got that shit on repeat, dog. That shit is crazy, dog. It's insane, bro. That shit is crazy, bro. And yeah, it will be disappointing. And Circus it's Maximus. Not- Circus <laughs> Maximus is one of my favorites. Schizo with Thug. Especially the second half. The second half of Schizo oh I fuck with, dog. Yo, the beat changed like yeah. twice, right? Like right. three times. That last, that last, last, last part? That beat is fucking sexy as hell, bro. I'll be running that shit back like a motherfucker, bro. Telekinesis, like we said, Future and Scissor. When Scissor when Scissor comes on, that she shines in that fucking shit. Talk to me about love. The join with Cuddy, because you know Cuddy played a better part. I w- I wish Cuddy played a better part than the last thirty seconds of the song. Okay, so okay, Jay, <laughs> Jay, this is my question. When you say that, do you wish that he just had a longer verse, or do you wish that his verse was better, or mm, both? I I would say you know I. I would say Cuddy never disappoints where he's, he's on a chorus or something, you know, like on a song. So I feel like if he was like, a, if he had something to do with the chorus of the song or, and I also would say like, if his lyrics was a little better, like, yeah, I wasn't really like, when I first listened to the song, I was talking to my dog and I was like, oh wait, Cuddy's on this thing. Wait, hold on, let me, let me step back. But it was like, I looked at my phone and I was like, wait, there's only like 30 seconds left on this, on this, on this track. Like, it's yeah. not enough anymore, anymore. Because typically when they, they're together on a track. Um, they usually it's usually a banger, in my opinion. Baptized in fire. Like uh <laughs> you remember that concert? Yeah, he came out to that <laughs> shit. That shit was lit. Um, what was another song he did? Uh Scots. The Scots is fire, start to finish. Scots. The Scots through the late uh, night. Cuddy's on that. Through the through the late night, bro. Come on, bro. You can I, do better. You can do better. You know, I you think, know what it is? My oh, bad. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say, I think we could all agree that the worst Travis Cuddy song. Cause he's not really on it. It's like uh the fucking God song on Asher Road. Don't let I forgot what it's called. It's not trying to be God. Yes, that not one. Trying to be God. Oh, but he's, he's just doing ad libs on there. He's just humming. That's like dog. Come on, bro. Like, it's not fair. He's not really even credited on there because he's just like humming. No, dog. Really... You, I'm looking at. I'm looking at the tracks list. It says. It says featuring Kid Cudi. If it says <laughs> featuring Kid Cudi, he's credited, dog. That's interesting. Yeah, because like I, I don't. Ex- I don't really count that as a feature because it's like I, I don't remember know. him being on that song. Keep it exactly. above. Actually, he's just. Because it's like. This is America, the Childish Gambino shit. Young Thug is all over the beat, making ad libs, but he's not credited. So like, I look at it like, like, yo, it's, your shit is dope. Come on and do this. Add this to the to the to the record, you know. But for yeah. me, like, love. I see. He, I think, and I could be completely wrong. Love might be. He put him on there as a homage to his song, Love. That's a good song. And he might have just song. like put him on there because he's just like, yo, like this is like. Maybe that song inspired him or some shit like that. Like, I, like, I don't know. But I like once I saw those that it was called Love and Cuddy was on there, I was like, oh, okay. 
I can see why he put them on there type shit. So it I, was I like an unreleased song. song for a bit. Yeah. Y'all want y'all want a y'all want an official collab project, Travis and Cody? The stock, not, I would like it, yeah, why not? I don't want a lot of songs though. I'll We're take like, like five. I'll take like a good ten. Cause like I want mm. I want them to have like how 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 Drake does his shit. Like when he does his album with somebody, they each have their own songs too. But then they have songs together. So you feel like you're earning the songs with both of them on it. Man, stop it. Her loss was Drake's album. 21's barely on that shit, dog. So stop it. <laughs> you're not stop wrong. It. You're not wrong. But he did it with uh with Future too. You know, Future that was a yeah, yeah, yeah. Time time to be alive. Yeah, yeah. Cause like I, I kind of like that because it feels like and those songs are usually like towards the end of the album where they each have their own song. But like it's cool because it's just like, oh, like I'm listening to both of these artists together, and then they remind you that they do it on their own too. So like that shit would be fire. So like a call yeah. like 10 songs would be cool. Or just like a couple of them are solo songs and the rest of them is just them two, maybe one or two with features, but like nothing too long. Yeah, I'm not. No, nah, I need it. I need it, bro. I I need it. Fuck all that, man. <laughs> no, I you, but nah, I need it. <laughs> I need the collab album, bro, because that it's, it's, it's just too perfectly their sounds. Literally, Travis adopted it from Cuddy. Cuddy, I mean, Travis is Cuddy's protege, and you could you could say you could say that Travis took Cuddy's sound and just fucking just went crazy, dog. Yeah, went I to don't the fucking. So. You don't think it's so? Biggest inspiration. I just yeah that that but like I don't think he took his sound or like really like I don't no. no. He didn't take his I, sound. Yeah, that's so why I wanted to retract that. But yeah, like, yeah. I don't when I say, hear when too I, much Cuddy in Travis because he's so different, bro. That he's I just different, don't. but he's not. He's different, How but he's he not? not from Cuddy. How is he not? Because you can see the resemblance. You can see why Cuddy is an inspiration. You can see Cuddy's influence in Travis's music. That's why I said he's different, but he's not. Kind of, yeah. Like, he, I, I, <laughs> like I don't full like full head on no i'm not fully disagreeing with you but like full head on like travis has like created his own shit to the point mm-hmm. where i'm just like yo like he's travis scott mm-hmm, mm-hmm. no 100%. <laughs> that's travis scott that's kid cuddy that's kanye west mm-hmm. uh but like yeah like there's certain like, he obviously he says it right so like even if i don't fully agree and I'm on board with that like fully hear it he says it so like I could right. be totally wrong, you feel me? But like, yeah, like I just see him as such a separate thing. But like when it comes to like maybe like because Travis doesn't really sing on his songs like that either, which is like one of the main things Cuddy brought. So that's why like I'm just like, yo, Travis is like so different than like his sounds and shit like that. So completely different. Travis, Travis like dives deeper into the sounds. Like he wants to make sure that every sound that's coming from his track is going to be cohesive with the song. Cuddy, Cuddy doesn't do that, in my opinion. Cuddy, he adds elements to the track. Yes. But it's not like Travis. I don't know if I'm making it. I don't know if I'm kind of, I don't know if I'm explaining it well. But... I hear what you're saying. Yeah, because you're right. Like, I agree with that. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, yeah. mm-hmm. it doesn't take away the fact that. Cuddy's to go. Base level, bare minimum, yes. Like, he's inspired by him. So he probably obviously puts him on there. But, like, yeah, like, I think very separate because like you got people who and this doesn't really settle the debate but like you got people who fucking they're like super good off of kid cuddy but they fuck with travis scott that's kind of crazy yeah because I, I talked to a lot of them i don't really fuck with kid cuddy i'm like get out of here I'm yeah i've been hearing it a lot <laughs> more travis scott. yeah yeah it could be it could also be an age thing cuddy. <laughs> it could also be an age thing you know actually so, be, so, I mean, we went to the show. Like, I'd be surprised at how many young kids be at his show. So, like, he's still reaching younger. But they only know because... his new songs. They don't really. They weren't really singing to his old shit. You know? Like we were. Yeah, but like still, like even that is more of a testament to like his longevity and shit like that. But it's just like, yo, his new songs are still like grabbing a younger audience type shit. If you guys wanna, if you guys wanna mention anything else about um Utopia before we move on. I kind of just really want to highlight because you see we had like a, a segment where we talked about features and we got to always go to the beginning of that and why that's even like a part of the conversation. Mm. And it's because he started not announcing his features. And I think that's so like dope. Um, The first time he did that was Birds in the Trap 
Was it birds? Okay. Yeah. And then birds yeah. in the trap came out because he streamed it. It was on the radio station on Apple Music. I remember I was at work. Apple Music had just come out. Apple was doing deals. That's why they had to deal with Drake for views. They had oh, to yeah. deal with Kanye for Pablo after a while. And Travis premiered his album on there. So he didn't announce features. So we all just listened to the album as one. And you're hearing the features as you listen to the album. And then he did the same thing for Astro World, and he's continuing that um, tradition. And I think that's super dope. I think <laughs> hard. Who am I? Oh, yeah. I, I think that's hard. like so cool and like special. And like, I wish more artists would do that. And then, like, obviously, we we started talking about how like he started listing the features now. But it's nice. It's a nice little surprise because it's like you think about when you go to the movies. Let's think about uh, Marvel, like. You're like, yo, when these cameos pop out, it's a nice little surprise. It's like a nice gift. Yeah. It's super cool to see because, you don't, we don't know the album. We don't know who's on the song. So we don't start preemptively being like, oh, Future's on this. It's probably going to sound like this. Nah, you just listen to the album and then Future comes on the song. And I think that's super cool. So I just wanted to highlight that part. No, 100%. I want to play a little de devil's advocate, though, because Travis is at oh, a level God. where he I could do that. <laughs> Jay, shut up. <laughs> Uh, Ray, uh, Travis is at a level he could do that because he's like an A plus 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 star. Where you know the the artists coming out nowadays, they don't have that they don't have that leverage yet. I mean, you know? yeah, but you think about because he did that on his second album, like, and I was explaining how like Rodeo doesn't get talked about a lot because it was really for the core fans, hmm. and in Birds he was still trying to get that larger audience because mm -hmm. he really still didn't have it until Astro World. Facts, I agree, honestly. Yeah. It was Astro World was the first tour that he did where he was doing arenas. Like that was the first tour that he did MSG. Mm. For Birds, he was still doing like the smaller venues. Rodeo. Yeah, it was at Terminal Five. It was at Terminal Five in New York. Correct. Mm. Correct. Yeah. And like Terminal Five right now, you get artists that are like kind of known, they're know. well known, but like they're still not selling out full speed. Yeah, you know so. You you bring up a good point, but I, I think he started doing it at an early, not so early part of his career, but like where he still wasn't that mega star. Yeah, because I mean, he, he was like he was a fan of more of the art and like yo, I have these people on my album that I really probably worked hard to get on that really I'm excited to share things like that, and it was super dope. All right, gentlemen, let's get to the shits. Rainer earlier today dropped a fucking bomb in the group chat. I was telling everybody, oh, no. I was like, all right, yeah, this is the structure of the pod. Bing, 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 bang, 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 bang. And then Rain all of a sudden goes, yo, we should do a ranking of the albums. And I, I hit him, I think I hit him with the eyes emoji. I'm like, bro. <laughs> Here we go. Like, bro, first and foremost, like, I'm just, uh, to be honest with y'all, like, I'll, I've been having Utopia on repeat to, in preparation for this pod. So my list might be a little janky. I don't know. I mean, that's cool. But that's what I said, too. Like, we only a week into Utopia, so... Like it's place right now. You might either not have had enough time with it, or you just have that. What's what's that? What's that saying? Like when something is new and you're like high off of it type shit. I forgot what the saying is, but like it could be that. You could be on either side of that spectrum. So that's why like I thought it would be interesting to do that. Plus, I think his discography is so special that it deserves to like it have deserves a conversation of his other albums too. No, 100%. But now that I'm thinking about it, it definitely deserves its own fucking episode. <laughs> it definitely deserves its own episode. But listen, man, the only album that I have solidified is my personal, his number one album. Oh, God. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I, I don't even know what to expect. <laughs> better not be what I think it is, too. <laughs> yeah. I'll, 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 I don't give a fuck. I'll be, the, I'll be the first one to jump into the water. Fuck it. I think his best album is Astroworld. Oh God! Oh God! Let me get out of here! Oh, oh my God! <laughs> All right, so we'll do, we'll do, we'll do. What do you think is his best album? And we won't okay, rank because if we could do an episode, then we'll do that. We could do an episode. I agree. All right, cool. I appreciate that. More content. But um, uh, listen. So the reason why I have Astro World as number one, it's not necessarily the music. To me, is amazing. I love the music. We talked about Stargazing, Carousel, Sycamore. The three opening track sequences is amazing to me. It's not really about the music. It's what you just said, Rainer. You literally just said how Astro World was the album that took him out of here. Yeah, it's the one that brought in the general audience from Rodeo and Birds in the Trap. Astro World was a such a fucking moment, bro. 
this guy created Astroworld Festival, which is basically the backstory was that Houston, Texas, back in the day when Travis was a little kid, they had an Astroworld Festival. They took it down because politics and money and all that shit. Theme park. What what happened? It was a theme park, right? Yeah, you're right. It Mm -hmm. was a theme park. Travis Scott for this for this album, he brought the fucking festival back and he also tied it into his album. And then you see all the clips on social media. You see the fucking the 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 decorations, the entrance to Astroworld. It's like his gold face with like him opening his mouth. People walking through that shit. And everybody and I just remember the moment. I remember that moment where that album was I was like I was taken aback of how like the production this, the sequencing, the fuck, obviously Sickle Mode with Drake, that's a fucking moment. That's still, that's the movie, that song is still ringing. And that to me personally is why I have Astral number one because I was already a Travis, a Travis fan, but I was living in the moment as far as him taking off. I was seeing it for myself, the radio, everybody talking about him in person, the festival, social media, like everything was revolving around him at the time and everybody was like, okay, this guy is it. He's the, he, he had he, that, Becoming a documentary ever. too, remember? Look, Mama Can Fly. That's why it's my number one album. Like, I don't think there's a bad answer. Yeah. Like, honestly, yeah. I don't. I don't think there's a bad answer. Like, any answer is valid. Um, so yeah. All right, so you go now, dog. <laughs> <laughs> <The fuck? laughs> hey, my man, Hefe, Hefe ain't speaking a while, so I wanted to, I wanted to let him out, you know. Hefe. <laughs> it's a lot of pressure on me. But <laughs> his best album. It's not even my opinion. It's just a fact. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm dead. Birds in the track, Sing McKnight, bro. Right that now. is his best album. Like, are you oh. kidding me? Like, even <laughs> though he wasn't, <laughs> even though he wasn't like, he he wasn't popping off to like what what Rayner said about um, Astro World. I remember going to his uh, to Terminal Five uh, to watch him perform this. I missed that. It was show, me, man. my boy Wallace. Yo, that. Bro, it was crazy. He came out the with the eagle in the fire. background with the gate, bro. That shit was the merch was fire. And I think Christoph came too, and and um, they, they had a Virgil, a Virgil shirt because him and Virgil made a collab with merch. That's the one, I that's remember. The one. I want that shit still. <laughs> so that's a fact. But he came out to the end, bro, and I was just like, yo, it's it's over. It had um, but Andre three thousand was on that, right? The end? Yeah, Andre three thousand. And and way back you had a Kid Cudi's vocals in the background, I believe. Was it Kid, yep. was it Cudi's mm-hmm. vocals? Yeah, mm-hmm. baby. Yeah. Bro, you, whoa, bro, that shit go hardcore. Mm-hmm. Don't, three, don't three, sacks, three sacks was on two songs, right? And Birds in the Trap, or am I bugging? Nah, that was uh, on uh, Cudi shit. That was, was Cudi, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm mixing them up. Yeah, yo, yo, yeah, you wallin'. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't know how it was that. <laughs> Through the night, bro. Like I could go on. Um. um even the SDP interlude was fire. Like, it was calm. Bro, my man, he brought Cassie calm. back, bro. Cassie, bro, bro for the SDP bro. interlude. Are you kidding me, bro? Wow, There's I forgot no- about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I forgot gotta, about that. Go be- and, like, honestly, go, this, dude. like, even, I like Sweet Sweet. I like Outside. Goosebumps, that was a single. Goosebumps was fire. That was a yeah. moment. When that shit bumped at a club or, like, wherever you're at, you're bumping to that song. It, like, like you're not bumping. I don't know what you're doing. Um, first take, I really didn't fuck with it like that. Oh you're my just like, god, it's too slow. Oh god, they'll tell Yo, me this nigga how, likes it. How are you gonna dog everything that I like? You're always going the opposite, <laughs> bro. I fuck with Yo, first son. take because my my dog Bryson, dog, my dog Bryson just fucking kills that shit, dog. I think it's yeah. hard, man. First take is hard, but I see why I see why he says that though. Keep it a buck, gotta go because it doesn't really fit with the album, bro. Like, how you I put that between that. Goosebumps and pick up the phone? You can't yeah, put that in between. You should have placed it, like, yeah. after SVP or before. Yeah. Right, uh, right, that, right. Lose, lose is fire. My guidance, eh, sometimes I fuck with it, sometimes I don't. It depends <laughs> what kind of mood I'm in. And then Wonderful, he ends the he ends the album with Wonderful. It's a great album. Um, I fuck with Astro as well, but I think Birds in the, in the Trap Sing Magnet. And he came to the Bronx. And he came to the Bronx to Hut's play and he performed it. Bro, I'm sorry. If you come to the Bronx, you up here, bro. Yeah, you you up you up there, bro. BX all day. You already know how to do it. Listen, man, because I I I might as well keep the momentum going because it's fucking best album. It's birds in the trap. Birds in the trap. Are you kidding me, bro? Yo, listen, man. Bro, I was waiting for this album OD, bro. Cause I'll tell you this. It was it was a little snippet video where he had goosebumps, because I think. 
who was it that produced it? Was it T minus? Let me see. Give me a second. Because you got Cardo, Young Exclusive, and Q Beats. I, th- I thought T minus worked on that shit, but mm. T minus fire. He was on a run. He was working with Future. I heard that beat, bro, and I was like, what the fuck is that? That shit, bro, I played that snippet. That shit went platinum on my phone, bro. Just <laughs> alone, bro. And then um, then I heard the snippet for Lose. And when I went to the Coney Island show, he played that shit, and I knew all the lyrics, bro. I must have been the only nigga in there singing all the lyrics to that song. And then my second, maybe super close to my favorite Travis Scott song, Pick Up the Phone, bro. Get the phone, baby. That song is too fucking good. Go hard. It's too fucking good. We didn't even Biebs in the trap, where people thought Justin Bieber was on there saying "nigga," (laughs) 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 and then you found out it was now, and you're like, "Who the fuck is this nigga?" I just put Ave and then leader. That would have been. That would have been super hard if fucking Justin Bieber was on that song, but if he didn't say nigga, but like if Bieber was on that song. <laughs> yo, hey, bro, fucking coordinate. What is it? Is it which one is it? Um is it way back at the end that he got the uh look boy? But don't you leave me. Yes, way back. Come on, bro. Are you yeah. kidding me, bro? Yeah. <laughs> this album is fucking yeah, incredible. Yeah, it was on crack, bro. Sweet, sweet like Coco. All my niggas outside with 21. Oh, my niggas outside. Yeah, outside. <laughs> bro, this is his best album, bro. Outside, okay. I, I really, I really fight for rodeo, and I always want to say that it's his best album because that shit is so fire. And I just remember waiting for it. I bought two copies. I wanted the action figure, bro. I wanted all that shit, bro. I remember when Rodeo came out. And it's such a good album that doesn't get talked about a lot. And I feel the same way about Days Before Rodeo. So, like, I put those together as, like, it's Avengers, Infinity War, Endgame, bro. (laughs) It's a trilogy. It's just, like, bro, they just fucking go together, bro. But this shit right here, bro. The features still are not listed on there, bro. Yeah. Let's pick up the phone, bro. All right, gentlemen. So, yeah, we got to do this fucking... We got to... We gave his... What we personally think is his best album, but we got to really get into the shits and make an episode about ranking his albums, talking about favorite including songs from the albums and all that shit. Al and Days Before. We including those, man. No, 100%. 100%. Drugs, and it, Drugs is up there. It's one of his top songs ever. Yo, ever. but guys, um, before we wrap it up, I do want to end it with... We talked about his albums. We talked about Utopia. I kind of wanted to talk about like just like where his career goes from here because another oh, something something that I've been seeing on the internet too is that this is his first project since the Astro World tragedy, and the only thing that we have of Travis talking about that situation, there's like a verse on my eyes. I don't know if you guys saw this, but there's a verse on my eyes where he his lyrics. I replay them nights and right by my side, all I see is a sea of people that ride with me. If they just knew what, what Scotty would do to jump off the stage and save him a child. That's the only thing that we have of Travis Scott talking about the tragedy of Astroworld. Um, and as far as like where his career goes from here, he's really, I, obviously he's trying to put the whole thing behind him. But like, where do you see him going? Do you see him dropping more albums? Like, like three more, four more. Do you see a cap? Do you see him focusing on Cactus Jack and his other artists? Like, I just wanted to pick your brains and see, like, what 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 else can he do from here? He's already the he had it. He took five years after the Astro joint. He dropped this album, and it's like it's almost like he never left. Honestly, he's right back on top. Missed opportunity, bro. Because you brought up Cactus Jack. There was no Don Tolliver on this album, bro. Yeah, word. Was not happy about that, bro. Word. Okay. Donnie. Right. Okay. But yeah, go ahead, Jay. That's all I wanted to say. <laughs> well, uh, it depends. Like, I know he's trying to put everything behind him. You know, obviously, people dying at his concert is like real, like, uh, it's a terrible thing, honestly, because that's the last thing an artist wants. Like, his fans dying, you know, when they're like enjoying his music, enjoying uh, the moment. But I think, in terms of like, I-, I think right now, he he should be on a little bit more features and try to like go as off as he can in those features. I don't think it's time for him to drop, like, he, uh, he just recently dropped this album, obviously, like, last week. Um, so he might take a little break in terms of, like, you know, making another album. But um, I honestly think, one, he has to go back on tour. 
he has to go back on tour. He might be, it, it might be a little shaky at first because you know after what happened. But that's one thing I would, I would like for him to do because I will go to that concert a hundred percent. I will be there. MSG, we out. Um, Facts. um, the next thing I think is like you said, Cactus Jack. He has to work. He 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 has to like focus on like his other artists. You know, help him bring him up. Because look, yo, um, I'm looking. I'm looking at the albums. Rodeo dropped in 2015. Birth and Trap 2016. Astro World 2018. 2018. And then after Astro World, he took five years, and then this album dropped. So I can't really get a gauge if he's gonna go back to like the first three albums. He dropped them within a year, year and a half between each album. So I don't know mm -hmm. if he's gonna do that or if he's gonna do the Kendrick and take like three, four years to drop another album. And then it's oh. like. What else does he, he? It's not that he has to prove anything, but I don't see him trying to get to the point where he's like, I want to become the biggest artist in the world. You're already that. I want to be the most influential artist in the world. He's already one of that. It's like, what else does he have? Ray, what's that stink face you got on? You said the biggest artist in the world. You're already that. He's not. My bad. He's one of. My bad. You're right. Yeah, he is, he is. <laughs> I think. No, nah, man. Like, I'm just, bro, I'm tired of motherfuckers just waiting years to put out music, bro. Put out fucking music. You love music. Put out music, bro. I'd like it. Does like why? Why are you waiting so long? <laughs> it literally does nothing. Like you can go on tour. Obviously, you got to do a tour. It's been fucking years since you performed. You got to do a tour, but you can record while you're on tour, bro. And then put out an album when your tour is done. Fucking Bad Bunny went on tour back to back, bro. He put out like two albums in less than a year, bro. <laughs> album of the year. He should have got album of the year off of that one. Facts. People used to do that all the time, bro. Like people, like Ludacris used to put out an album every fucking year, bro. And yeah, Ludacris is trash. Fucking out, bro. Come on, son. Yeah. Oh my god. Fucking out, bro. But yeah, like put out music, bro. Put out music. So, so okay. So, would you mind if Travis took like a two-year break, a three-year break? No. Two years is cool, but are you taking four or five years, bro? But no, like, that's too that's much. Yeah, this yeah. one, this one was warranted because obviously Absolutely, shit yeah. happened, right? He had another kid. He has a family. The tragedy happened. He's working on the music. He put out some singles. We're like, bro, put out music, bro. Put mm. out music. And he has to be on Mad Features now, bro. He has to be on Mad Features. That Bad Bunny, he's on Mad Features. Different yeah. type of music, Mexican music. You know his uh, reggaeton. English no. music, bro. He's he's there. Jay, bro, that's no, the I'm biggest not... artist in the world, bro. He's putting out fucking music, bro. Nah, Jay, that's you have a, you have a really good point. Prime. You have a really good point, and I think I think that's I think that's what he has in front of him because he was gone for five years, and I think he wants to like try and reclaim his stake as one of, if not the biggest artist. Because Astro World at the time, you can make the argument that he was. So mm -hmm. I think Jay, I think Jay, I think that's what he needs to do. He needs to get back on the scene with features, with singles, with uh, just being around more with the tour. But it has to be fire. It, it can't be the trash features he be he be, he has been having. Mm -hmm. It can't be trash. It can't. He has to go with right, bars. Right. He has to know what to do. Okay. I'm, like I'm, take yeah. over the fucking song, bro. Like produce that whole shit over if it's trash. Like you know, just go in there, bro. Cook. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he has the talent. He's a kid. He's young. He's not right. a kid, kid. But like he's young, bro. Like. So we're just we're just speculating as to what he needs to do moving forward. But as far as factual, what he's doing moving forward, the only thing that we know right now is that he's having that concert in Rome, Italy. That's the only thing that we know right now, factual. Yeah, and, I think he's doing a tour too, though. But he just has but, been announced. But the thing is, I think that is the tour because he's doing he's doing different locations in different parts of the earth. That can't First, be the tour, bro. I'll slap that nigga. Dog, I think I think that <laughs> I'm dead. I think that was I think that's I think that's the tour, dog. Because think There's about no it, way, bro. Think about it. His first tour <laughs> off the Astroworld joint is not going to be a regular tour. He doesn't want to do that. He doesn't want to risk it. So he's going to do it, bro. So he's going to try and find a way to still tour, but not have it like a traditional tour. Because the, the 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 joint, the original, um, the 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 launching date for the tour stuff was supposed to be the pyramids, and I'm pretty sure that was going to be like he's going to allow fans in, but he's going to like set it up in a way. Where the fans are not going to be on top of each other like a traditional tour. Safe. Right. Yeah. So I think yeah, that's what he's doing with like different locations on the planet. But then that shit just becomes ex exclusivity, which is what I was complaining about with tours lately mm. and shows. Because like when Drake did the Harlem shows, it was like a sweepstakes, like XM, XS radio. I'm just like, that's bullshit. Everybody that's that backdoor that shit. went was like they knew somebody who gave them tickets to get in there. It's bullshit. Yeah. 
That shit is not fair. And it's not like it doesn't give people a fair shot. Like Ticketmaster is already on some shit with like the resale. Like it's going crazy. Resale, like you can't fully take away, but like people are ODing, bro. So like it's already tough out here to go see people. Then you got people who haven't seen them in five years. I haven't seen them in longer than five years. All right, gentlemen. Yo, this was fucking fun as shit. I love seeing <laughs> y'all. I love reconnecting with y'all. And yeah, I haven't seen Travis yet, oh so God. I gotta I gotta knock that off on my bucket list. So yeah, we, tour, we out, man. We out. So if one of his locations is fucking New York, uh, fucking performing, it don't matter Liberty. where, bro. It could be the, the tri-state area, bro. I'm there. A fact. We gotta <laughs> make that happen, like 100. percent Again, thank you guys for your time and energy. This was amazing. I haven't seen you in a while. We gotta reconnect. Thank you for hopping on to the podcast. But all right. So as far as time flies, guys, you guys can catch this episode on all your podcast platforms, Apple, Spotify, Google, rate, review, subscribe to the podcast. Of course, check this out on YouTube as well. Get to see our lovely faces. Hit that thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. It'll be a big help. Um, I got some merch. I got the link in the description as well. Go check it out. Shia LaBeouf shirt. Still pushing those. And um, yeah, man, we'll check you on the next episode of the Time Flies podcast, and I'll check you guys out later. Peace.